Hey, thank you so much for clicking on the video. Before we get started, there is a major shift coming to the channel come the beginnings of May, but fret not, I will be very active and streaming regularly on Twitch. So if you have not created an account yet and followed me over on my Twitch channel, that is Dark Spider David for the username. So it's twitch.tv slash Dark Spider David. So if you can help out with that by checking out the channel, uh, checking out uh, past broadcasts that I've done and seeing if you like what you see, hit the follow button. You won't regret it. See you then. 2019, the year that the feels from the movies made you depressed. That's a huge thing to say coming out of Toy Story 4, out of all things. Hey guys, David here. So, first of all, my review is a little bit on the late side. So there were some scheduling things and some complications. But here I am, and I knew that I needed to kick every child out of my way walking down the theater to make sure that I checked out Toy Story 4. And what I found to be a huge accomplishment is that prior to seeing this movie, I did not see any trailers. So I just knew that certain things were involved, certain characters were going to be brand new to the series. But also, there were some caveats that I kind of had in mind. First and foremost, I was one of the naysayers when they announced that they were going to be making a fourth Toy Story. And I was just right there thinking, they already made three of them. Why are we making another one? It just feels like we just got done with Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3 came out nine years ago. Yeah, yeah, I feel I definitely don't feel older than I do right now. So you can't say that we just got done with Toy Story 3. It's just that the pain of that ending is still so fresh in our hearts that going into Toy Story 4, it's like, okay, what else can they do? Because despite how hurtful that ending for Toy Story 3 was, Toy Story 4 still kind of feels a little unnecessary because of how perfect that ending was. That ending wrapped everything up up in a very tight bow that it's like how it, how can they possibly top themselves when they manage to garner a best picture nomination not best animated film best motion picture for 2010 2010 back then when they released toy story 3 and here we have toy story 4 and i gotta say if you're gonna make an unnecessary sequel you better make it right sadly disney and pixar they did it right, and I hate saying that because I wish I could be contrarian, but they did it right. However, I have to be honest, though Toy Story 4 still, even after watching it, feels unnecessary after the landmark that was Toy Story 3, they were still able to squeeze a little bit more, possibly financially and monetarily speaking, but at least, again, I don't know how they managed to concoct this, but they came up with an interesting story that could serve as almost like a bit of an epilogue. You know how sometimes certain shows have the ending in the, like, the third or second to last episode, and then the last episode is kind of to, like, to wrap things up? Something that maybe Game of Thrones should have done? <laughs> Toy Story 4 kind of feels a little bit like that, where Toy Story 3 was that true ending. Toy Story 4 is more like an epilogue to what those... It's wrapping up those events to making sure that every, everybody gets their proper resolution in case you didn't feel like certain characters got their completion status at the end of Toy Story 3 and 4 is kind of sort of there for the most part, which has Woody making a, a new friend in the process of going on this road trip with this new kid, Bonnie, that we were left with at the end of Toy Story 3. And this new friend is called Forky. And let's just say that Forky plays a pivotal role in this plot. I don't want to say too much, but let's just say that there's something about his existence that kind of makes you think about these toys a little bit deeper than you probably deserve to. And when Woody and Forky go missing from the road trip, it's up to the rest of the toys, mainly Buzz Lightyear, Jesse, and even a new version of Bo Peep to come into the mix and make sure that they get back home safe to the Bonnie. And... I don't want to say much more than that because they were able to, like I said, bring it into this carnival setting, but also bring it in a territory that you weren't expect Toy Story, Toy Story stories to go, while at the same time still bring some familiarity from the, bringing some familiarity from the franchise in terms of like caring about the heart of the toys, making sure that these characters are still the characters that you loved. So. Woody's still Woody, Buzz is still Buzz, the rest of the characters that you know of. Now, granted, the one little 
thing that kind of came with the tor- tor- territory of be- this being the fourth installment in the series is that there's going to be some characters that are not going to get as much screen time as you were probably expecting to. I mean, I was kind of expecting certain uh, side characters like Mr. Potato Head, Rex, to just have like a couple of one-liners and kind of be shoved to the side, unfortunately, because they already had three movies uh, with them. And the one that hurt a little bit more, but at the same time, maybe there could be some behind-the-scenes stuff, is... Buzz Lightyear, voiced by Tim Allen. I, w- one part of me was kind of expecting him to have a bigger role in this film, and he doesn't really. He's actually more kind of in the line with those other characters when it comes to getting limited screen time that you were probably expecting. What type of motivation was there behind that? I don't want to touch that with recent headlines, but it, it was a little sad to see that a character that kind of kickstarted the whole thing with the original Toy Story of him having, you know, be this brand new toy that thought the whole thing was a new planet and all that stuff and having him be that fish out of water character is now kind of reduced to just this character that was mainly in this film for gags, mostly. Gags that even to me kind of didn't make sense. Like we're four movies in and he's still thinking that certain things are literal rather than figurative. That kind of threw me off a bit. So filling in that role was this brand new version of Bo Peep, which I really liked. I like that they were able to address her exclusion from Toy Story 3, but at the same time, giving her an arc that reminded me an awful lot. Like, this is the first thing that I thought about when I thought about Bo Peep in this movie. She got the Carol treatment. (laughs) Carol from The Walking Dead. If you guys know what I'm talking about, if you watch The Walking Dead, you know that Carol from Season 1 is a completely different person than Carol from Seasons 7, 8, and 9, and probably going into 10 when that comes out. She's a completely different person, and Bo Peep kind of got the same treatment. Of course, not not as dark, but there's certain elements there where you're like, yeah, you know, you're not exactly the nice and innocent and sweet-looking Bo Peep that we got from Toy Story 1, not only from a technical standpoint because they kind of refined her character model, but also from a character development standpoint where it's just not that person now again this may not sit well with every single person out there especially on the much more adult side because of the year 2019 that we're in if you're getting what i'm hinting at personally however i did like her and i also like that she was able to be an anchor for woody himself who was given a really interesting direction in this movie i mean he's still kind of woody from the other movies but let's just say that the way this movie ends ends it in a way where i'm like huh okay now if you make a toy story 5 then i'm gonna be convinced that you're just forcing it because it ends it in a very concrete way where i'm like okay again going back to what i said at the beginning that felt much more of an epilogue than toy story 3 was the true ending toy story 3 was the true ending this feels more like that epilogue wrap-up chapter and the ending kind of solidifies that in a way especially with giving woody the proper kind of arc that he deserves and i'm glad that Bo Peep was at least be able to play a pivotal role of that especially when the overall theme of this movie is all about loss and abandonment and finding your true home even if that home is not like a concrete person making sure that you got some kind of fulfillment by having a kid even if that kid is not around forever it's just the overall theme of this movie is accepting that that you know circle of life so to speak which is rather ironic because we did get a Lion King trailer before this and it's cool that again a movie like Toy Story or at least a franchise like Toy Story is not able to shy away from that that's what makes those movies so special is that all of them take uh, a jab at really mature themes but kind of sugar-coated in this kid aesthetic of toys coming to life which brings me to the point of two particular characters that are brand new to this movie and one of them is Forky who I was deathly scared was going to be annoying and thankfully he was not he was able to steal certain scenes he was able to make me laugh and he was also and it's funny because he could be seen as an allegory for perhaps a special needs kid and how you we need to accept everybody as how they are and Forky kind of interprets that in a way but again he still plays a role in that theme about loss and abandonment and learning to attach yourself to the kid and fulfilling your your purpose whether you like it or not and Forky takes a very introspective look at that because even at some points without going to spoilers even at moments he's like 
why I'm a fork. I should not be a toy. Why am I alive? And that's kind of freaking when you really think about it, questioning your own sentience. How am I moving? How am I this thing? And it's something way deeper than Toy Story deserves to go into. And on the much more comedic side character sort of way, Duke Kaboom, played by Keanu Reeves, is able to also steal the spotlight in certain scenes, but also play a role in that in terms of how he had an origin story that dealt with abandonment and how he needs to fulfill his duties, so that was cool. To a slightly lesser extent was the Gabby Gabby doll, who's technically speaking our main antagonist here, played by Christina Hendricks. Uh, she was okay. She still doesn't take the cake of... Lots uh hot lots of hog lots of lots from Toy Story 3 who was the ultimate villain. I think he so far is the Thanos of the Toy Story series. So she doesn't come up to those to those uh standards but at least again she does have a little bit of of uh, backstory to her that deals with that abandonment and it's cool that they didn't play her in the traditional villain sort of way. She wasn't as big of a threat as Lotso was but at least she had those goddamn <laughs> ventriloquist dummies. I gotta be honest, I thought it was pretty ballsy that they put those things in this movie that's a G-rated movie. The movie's rated G, and I can guarantee some nightmares were had last night when some kids managed to see those goddamn things. And even my girlfriend and I were kind of creeped out because they animated them in a certain way where their heads are just kind of like floating like this and they're kind of like moving with their heads like this. It's fucking freaky. And every time they came at the screen, I thought, okay. I'm glad I'm not seeing this in 3D, and I can't believe that the uh, clapping uh, monkey from Toy Story 3 was topped, but I think they did. And speaking of the animation, I'm going to go on a limb and say that I think this is probably the most beautifully animated Toy Story movie to date. Of course, that kind of comes with the territory, being that this is the most latest one with the advancements in technology. But one interesting thing that I thought that both the cinematographer and the director, I think his name is James Coley, Coley, something like that, they took a very interesting approach of handling the camera rather interestingly. Interestingly. <laughs> For one, I think this is the first Toy Story movie that is shot in the 2.40 by 1 ratio as opposed to the traditional 1.85 to 1 ratio that's a little bit taller, so it's a bit wider in that range. And I noticed that they would play a lot more with the depth of field. There's much more depth of field shots here where you can see that the background and the foreground are blurred out, but there's one a focused plane that's actually in focus where our characters are at. It kind of plays with the cinematography in a way where I'm like, you didn't need to do that with an animated movie, but you went to that extent and you treated it almost like a live action movie. And I love it when they do that in animation because it shows that they care about the detail. They care about the little things, including things from even past movies, like the little stitching on, on Woody's arm from Toy Story 2 and different little elements that you could probably take apart from the, uh, from the background and from the foreground that it makes this a very well composed film that's beautiful to look at. It's also a very funny movie to laugh at because even though I said that it still retains the heart of those movies, the director along with the writers, they were able to bring a, I gotta be honest, a slightly different level of humor. They're, they sometimes rely a little bit on cutaways that worked and some worked more so for the kids, but it still is able to take that approachable manner of humor that is just right for all ages and we were all laughing and there were some great moments that even caught me off guard. With that said, there is one little complaint I had about the movie and it pains me to say because I love these guys. I truly love them. They are some of my favorite comedians out there. They make some of the greatest skits on YouTube and on Comedy Central. But Kim Peel as Ducky and Bunny, I gotta be honest... You can surgically cut them out of this movie and the overall plot and the way that the theme of loss and, uh, and uh, abandonment kind of comes together does not feel touch, uh, touched or tampered with at all. Which pains me to say because that gives me the impression that these characters were written into the movie because somebody behind the production, whether it be the producers, the director, whatever, really wanted to have Kim Peele in this movie and they made those characters for them. Otherwise... Key, King and Michael Key would be off doing something else and Jordan Peele would be going back to his office to write the next nightmare that he's cooking up because <laughs> that's generally how they felt when they were kind of getting off their lines. Key is doing the whole fast talking thing and then Jordan Peele, again Jordan Peele to be honest with his uh, line reading sounded like he kind of he kind of sounded a little bit distracted. But when my biggest complaint about the film is these two side characters that I didn't hate but I just thought that were kind of unnecessary and not the actual unnecessary... Sarah Lee 
feel of the entire film, which technically I should be feeling because Toy Story 3 was such a great wrap-up, then, man, I don't know who the talent was involved behind this, but I'm glad that they were at least able to be sentient about how much of a quality product Toy Story needs to be if it has to justify a fourth film that did not need to be in the theaters and still manage to get me in the feels to the point of squeezing a tear out of my duct at one point towards the ending. And that still happened with Toy Story 4, and I hate it. By default, Toy Story 3 is still the peak of the series, but we can all universally agree that Toy Story 4 is still a great film. Where that ranks and your, you know, kind of listing for the Toy Story movies, that's all dependent on you. For me, I would probably say that this is still the most... One of the most polished Toy Story movies and also one of the most polished Pixar movies within the past recent years that feels justified. So I'm going to be giving Toy Story 4 a very, very, very low, very low 9 out of 10. It's crazy that I'm saying a very low and very bottom of the barrel 9 out of 10. And honestly, I was going to go for an 8 for the most part, but it wasn't until that ending that still managed to, again get that lump in my throat that I'm like, okay, there it is. I got to give it a nine by default. If I, if I'm able to give it, if that, if that, that's one of my standards, if I'm able to get something here, it's gotta be a nine. How can I not? How can I not? Don't judge me. Go and judge the movie for yourself when you go check it out. And if you have, Post in the comments below what you guys thought of the movie, like and share this video, and do not forget to hit me up on Twitch. I am now an affiliate over on Twitch.tv. Expect some crazy new streams. Hopefully, I'm going to implement some bots, some tiers, some things that will hopefully benefit you guys. And if you guys want to go and support it, the link is in the description below. Twitch.tv slash DarkSpiderDavid. Please, I will be doing some streams coming up very soon of various different games. I think I have Spider-Man Edge of Time cooking uh, in the works and many more. Also, make sure to... Hit me up on Twitter and on Instagram. Links are in the description below. Dr. Spider David is the username. And I'll see you guys all next time. Take care.